following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. I'm your host, Josh Mahler. We're going to get to all things UFC 299, giving you our reactions, uh, our you know how what we thought about each fight, our favorite fights of the night, just as we promised whenever we did the preview. It lived up to the hype. It was so much fun. Uh, it was an amazing fight all all the way around. Starting off with the early prelims, the very first fight started off uh, just absolutely so much fun. Uh, you know, and, and all throughout the night, there were some that didn't quite live up to the hype that they could have. But overall, amazing card. Uh, Three hundred has some big shoes to fit into. Just like we said, um, even though looking at three hundred again and taking a double check, I, I th- still think it's going to be exciting. Just. I don't know if it's going to live up to the hype of 299. We're going to get into it, though. We're going to talk about all of our favorite fights. But before we do, first got to mention our sponsors for this evening, and that is SeatGeek. SeatGeek is an amazing uh, amazing sponsor, an amazing service that you guys should be using, whether you're into sports or theater or concerts, uh, maybe you like a comedy show here and there. SeatGeek is where you should get your tickets. SeatGeek is, an amaz- is amazing so for so many different ways because you can go to SeatGeek.com or use their mobile app and it's so easy to use. Just in a couple of taps, you'll get your tickets and it's so easy to find the best prices on tickets because they have an amazing color coding system from green to yellow to red. Red knowing that you're not getting a good deal, so keep on looking. Yellow means you can keep on searching for a better deal, but remember this one just in case this is really where you want to sit. And then green means this is the best deal you're going to find on this kind of a ticket. So make sure to cop those tickets now with SeatGeek. And not only that, but you can also shop with a complete peace of mind knowing that SeatGeek is completely secure. They're not going to scam you. They're not going to sell you tickets that won't scan in at the door. You know that when you use SeatGeek, you are completely safe from all of that hassle. So go over and use SeatGeek by going to SeatGeek.com or downloading the SeatGeek app today and use that code R2TO for $20 off your next purchase. It doesn't get any better than that, guys. Go check them out, SeatGeek.com, or use that code R2TO. If you haven't used SeatGeek in the past to get your tickets, this is going to change the way you get tickets for any kind of event. If you have used them in the past, you know what I'm talking about. You know that it's the best. So go check them out seatgeek.com or use that app for uh, and, and use that code r2to for twenty dollars off uh, seatgeek has all of your tickets but let's get into it first obviously I have to bring in my co-host for this fine evening of talking ufc blake how you doing brother i am doing great what a card josh what a night uh the fights were awesome uh, just so much energy, comebacks, uh, amazing performances. Sugar, Sean, O'Malley. Hey, if you are what you say you are, a superstar, that's that man, baby. That's that man. Yeah, yeah He's I mean, a it, superstar. Yeah, I mean, it, it was one of those fights, too. We talked about it. It just felt like this could go either way. But after round one, it just felt confident. Uh, ever ever since then so i feel like round one sean was doing what he's supposed to do and just came back after that i'm jumping ahead of myself though we don't want to talk about that main (laughs) event just yet uh gonna give you our thoughts on that one just all around though like starting all the way from the from the beginning with the uh joanne wood winning that first fight we turned it on and we were a little late because we're like oh crap it's already five o'clock hurry up and turn it on it was in the third round already and these two girls are just haymakers back and forth and we talked about that too how even sometimes you know you watch the, those women fight and they're they're proving it to you that they're fun to watch, uh, and it absolutely was. But we'll we'll skip forward into the night because I think the first one that was a lot of fun, a legend of the sport and especially in the middleweight, uh, you know it, the, that division. Uh, talking about Michael Pereira or sorry M- M- Michelle Pereira, uh, I think is how he pronounces his name. Apparently, I've been pronouncing his name wrong this entire time. Um, <laughs> but Michelle Pereira comes out. Starting off, I just saw some dude coming out of the tunnel and dancing around and all choreographed. I'm like, what the heck are you doing? Then I realized it's, it's him. All right, Pereira is allowed to do this. He's he's allowed to have his time to shine because he is a legend of the sport. He's been in it for a while now. Uh, this marks his 30th win. Wins it in a submission in the first round with a minute left. Uh, I mean, he just came out. We were talking about this one, man. He came out because you, you're like, I don't remember if I watched that one. And I jogged your memory. Dude just put a whooping on him. It just didn't look like uh, like 
uh, I, I can't even say the other dude's name, but uh, McCall, uh, it didn't didn't look like he was in the same uh, league at all. He just did not yeah. deserve to be in that octagon with him. Uh, as soon as they stepped in, uh, Michelle Pereira just absolutely dominated and put him in a, a submission really quick. It was it was over very fast, and it was a very fun fight to watch, though. It was. Uh, it just felt like, like you said, he, he was just in a different league, uh, very sharp. Uh, it rocked old buddy, and that was it. It was it was game over. Uh, I, I thought he was. Uh, I thought he was a fun one to watch, Josh. I, I liked the entrance. Uh, I liked when he got in the ring. He just felt confident, and uh, he was. He just pushed. He pushed, and uh, he just. Hey, let's go. Let's get right in your face. Let's throw these hands, and uh, you know that's what they do at that level. So uh, I, I love the action in that fight. I think that's what got the juices going. That's what really kicked it off and said, "Hey, like this is going to be a special one." Yeah, yeah. I mean that that. That did feel like the first big fight, uh, and especially the way that it ended. Uh, that that definitely felt like the first big one. And then jumping forward, just a quick shout out, Macy Barber. I talked about how excited I was to see her in the octagon. I haven't seen her fight for a while, but she wrecked in her 14th. She's 14 and two now in the UFC. Uh, you know, as as a, in a in her professional career, uh, which is just crazy. She's so fun to watch. Uh, and and Caitlin. Uh, Sermonera, she's a really good fighter, and they put up a really good fight. It came down to a decision. It was a really close one. I thought Macy would have had it by more than she did. It definitely came down to the wire, and I was sitting there cringing like, I don't know. This could go either way. She ends up winning that one. That was another really fun fight, but we'll jump forward to the main card where it started off with a very fun one because Curtis Blades, we talked about him. I love Curtis. I, I think he's so fun to watch, and he's he seems like such a humble dude behind the scenes too. And he's just you you can appreciate him for for where he's coming from with all that, and just he, he seems like a genuine guy. Um, but and and I might be wrong on that, uh, but he he definitely puts that that show out there for us, anyways. But he he's such a fun fighter, and he was going against Almeida, and man, that first round felt like Almeida had it. I, yep. I didn't think he was gonna gonna pull it off, and then the second round, you could tell Curtis knew I'm not gonna let him get a hold of me because he's gonna keep me on the ground. I'm gonna keep it on the ground uh, up up on our feet, and I'm just gonna clock him once. And and finally, he got it right there at the end of round two. I think there was 30 some seconds left with that one. Uh, he ends up he ends up finishing it and and knocking him out. Which I just honestly, I was cheering for him, but I didn't see it coming. I thought he was gonna lose that match. I think Almeida got a little too comfortable right there in that second round. Oh, yeah. And I was wondering why he I, – I felt like to to shoot right there and he got caught in a bad position when he slipped. And I, I don't think he felt like Curtis was going to just continuously yeah. hammer fist. And once he did, once Blade started hammer fisting – it was night night. I mean, you could tell. I mean, when you see the body kind of limp, go limp like that, uh, you know that you're you're not in a you're not in a good spot. So uh, he just <laughs> he capitalized off them uh, off of a, a mistake, and you know it worked out for Curtis Blades, and and uh, you know, he got the dub, and it's one of the you know couple comebacks that we got to watch Saturday yeah. night, and. That's what made it exciting. The entire card is, you know, one minute this guy he's winning, and then all of a sudden he's there knocked out or several of submitted. Them. Yeah, it yeah. was it was wild. It was off the charts. Yeah, it was it was it was a lot of fun. This was just one of them too. Like you said too, I I feel like the way that he was he was shooting in, he he got caught at the wrong moment. But you know, and my my dad was like, why didn't he just stand up? What is he doing? I was like, I think he got clocked, and didn't realize what happened. And I think he was just kind of stuck there. And then he got that second and third one, and then he was done. Then he had him yep. on the ground, uh, and it was funny too. So far, st starting off with Macy Barbara, because I, I, I was like, I want to try this prize picks out. Figured why not use their their bonus bets and stuff like that, play around with it. And so I was jumping in there and, and tried that one out. And so I did 
the over uh, on total strikes for Macy Barber, it was like 60 and a half. I was like, I think I think she'll get more than 60 and a half to, uh, sign- total significant strikes. She ended up having 64, barely hit that one. And then it came to Curtis Blades. He was my my next one. Uh, and I can't remember what the number was, but you know, like he, I, I thought for sure right there at the end, all of those were going to count as significant. They didn't count them all. I, I still don't understand what's, what a significant strike is and what isn't, um, but he was like three away, and I'm, I lost that one. But it was still a lot of fun. I mean, just the way that he just right there at the end just going to town on him, just knocked out, uh, you know, just yeah. cold. It was fun. It was yeah. fun. Uh, it was exciting, too, because I think he knew uh, – I think he knew he was losing at that point. And you have he to. felt the mo- – yeah, he felt the momentum switch right there. And uh, just the way he capitalized on those hammer fists, and he knew that he had <laughs> full uh, full face wide open, and he knew he could do damage, and he did just that. Yeah, and he, he reacted fast, too. I think that's what, what yep. saved him in that moment because when he got him the first time, I don't think I would have realized how good I got him, but he realized that as soon as he, he connected and came right back with the next one. Uh, just an amazing comeback. I was really happy for him. Like I said, I was I was rooting for him. Uh, I, I didn't know if he was going to be able to pull it off, but another man I didn't know who would be who would be able to pull it off. I wasn't sure if he, he would be able to, to, to win this one. He really needed a win. Uh, Sean O'Malley even said he was one loss away from bare knuckle uh, boxing, um, and it's Peter Yan. So, I mean, we we both talked about Peter Yan, such yeah. a fun fighter, and he's been in, in the UFC for a while now, uh, and and has definitely gained respect. But he's just had some tough losses, and a couple that yeah. you could even argue are a little questionable. Uh, I would even say even against Sugar Sean, a little questionable, but. Not, nevertheless, the record shows losses on there in, a, in the, these last few fights, and he needed a big one. But he's going against Song Yudong, who just like we like we talked about, such different fighting style. It felt like first round again, another one that I would say was a comeback because first round I felt like Song Yudong just had him, and and he yeah. didn't know what to do against him. He didn't have any any kind of counter that could actually land, uh, and and. Song was just all over him. And then Peter Yan ends up coming back in the second. I feel like the second was a really close one, but leaned towards Peter Yan. And then the third, uh, third round, it ended up ended up going to, to the uh, you know to the decision right down to the to the last minute, uh, and and went to decision. And he ends up winning it, uh, not the way I think he wanted to win, but it was definitely a good win. Like I said, I feel like this was a very much needed win for for Peter Yan. Yeah, I think Peter, I, I think he had to figure out the distance. And once he figured out the timing and the distance, uh, then he could go to work. He started off a little slow because he was just kind of filling them out. Uh, and, I mean, old buddy was bringing it. I mean, he was applying pressure. He was controlling the octagon. But I think once Jan figured it out and he got the timing down, uh, the feints and everything like that. Uh, there was one where uh, Sandong kept trying to. He kept. He would act like he would shoot. He would. He would faint for for the shoot, and then he would try to come up and just and just throw a right out of it. And and Peter fell for it like the first couple times, and then in the second, like middle of the second round, like. Uh, Sandong tried it again and it didn't work. And Peter was just like, Hey bro, like you're going to have to go to something else. I've already seen that a couple times. I've already figured out the timing, the distance, like I've got you figured out. And I think the more and more like Peter Yan, when he started touching Sandong and he started slowing down, Peter knew like, Hey, let me just step in here hit him a couple times, jab here, jab here, get out of here. I'm going to win this fight. And that's what happened that third round. He was dominant. Uh, and the, in the latter part of the second round, I felt like he was really dominant and that's what winning the fight. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I just felt like, like you said too, as soon as he made the one solid connection, I feel like he, you slowly yeah. saw in the second round him gaining confidence and finding a way to make those connections third round just felt like he had it he had it in control and then and then song just had a hard time and and then i i think i think peter yon was really doing good at finding ways to to create distance at the right times too uh, and so yeah just overall uh, really really happy for him because we were talking about that 
a dude that we love watching fight uh and I, I I don't want to see him go, go you know get basically leave the UFC just because of a couple of tough you know I, he he's he's not that far from it if he loses this one that's dangerous for your career yeah I thought if he lost you know like I said on the preview I thought if he lost he was going to hang it up uh yeah. just because I I mean you you would have been on a four fight losing streak yeah or, you know so there there would have been yeah, a massive at least skid. at least four out of the last five I think. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it, yeah, something like that. It's it's yeah, it's been quite a bit. I mean, it's just, I I, I don't know how you can keep yourself in it and l- allow yourself mm-hmm. to take that kind of a beating. Not only that, I just don't think Dana wants to see you in there taking a beating and not being yeah. able to win. He's going to tell you, hey man, we need to re- we we need to renegotiate this. You need to either find something else or hang it up. Uh, and and I I, th- I do think Dana cares about his fighters enough to do that for him. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, maybe he would have kept on going because he they know how good he can be. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, just a really good really good win for him, really happy for him. Um, but then going on, uh, I guess the ni- next one to talk about, I think the, the biggest one would have been uh, Michael Page and Kevin Holland. Uh, like the Michael Venom Page, they call him MVP. Yeah. I didn't think, so the same thing we talked about with, with Michelle Pereira, I don't think that he deserved to to make the entrance that he did, being all showboaty and with the cape and throwing it off. And but this is his character. And one thing I will say, he was extremely entertaining the entire time. Uh, and and he's got such a unique fighting style, and the way that he's just so energetic, bouncing around, makes it so difficult to land anything because your target keeps on moving everywhere. And he was just constantly moving nonstop. And that was something that was just absolutely shocking me. I don't know if you can hear my dog up there, but she is going crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's having a fun time. Yeah, she must be seeing somebody outside or something. But uh, no, I mean, just seeing seeing this one, I mean, with, with Michael Page, I thought he came in there. He did a very great job of keeping his length and using his length uh, as, as a tool. Because he he just he he kept Kevin Holland so far away and couldn't do much, and then whenever he got on the ground that that time there was one time where he got him in this guillotine, and somehow squeezed out of it and flipped out of it. It was just absolutely amazing. Yeah, and I think he really annoyed Kevin Holland, and with the with the weird fighting style um, and the movement and bouncing around the ring, Josh, I, I feel like. Kevin was really annoyed even in the first round because he couldn't hit the guy. And then it showed in Kevin Holland's corner uh, at the end of the first round, his, his, his guy looks at him, his camp, they look at him. Trainer says, Hey man, like you're not doing what we told you to do. All right. And Kevin Holland looked at him and said, well, I don't think that you know that he's faster than what we thought. So it's really hard for me to do those things. Yeah, that you're yeah you heard me to you do. heard the frustration the whole time, and that's that's what was like so funny about the whole fight, and it was so entertaining. Because, yeah, because like you said, he's like yelling back at his coach, like I I can't see him out there. Like, well, what am yeah. I supposed to do? Like, you you did not train me for this, you know. And, and he was kind of getting that's frustrated it. back, and then even at at the end too, where you see him kind of mocking Michael Page, he he just got in his head with all the showboats and everything. There was just so much about that. I mean, personally, I loved it. Uh, I know some people probably don't like all the showboating and kind of crazy, but I do think afterwards he was humbled because he said this was a lot more difficult than I thought, and and I'm, I'm I had a big awakening to what the UFC really is. Well, one thing that's why I asked the other day about his ground game is because I thought when if if Kevin couldn't touch him, would Kevin try to take him to the ground? And that was the biggest issue that I had with the fight. Would would Kevin try to take it down to the ground? And and every time he tried, MVP said, "Hey, no, look, we're not going there." You know, like hate yeah. it for you, brother. I'm I'm stuffing that. Well, and uh, and the one time that he that that Kevin Holland had a chance, he had him. He was on top and had a chance and was going. Michael Page was so good at just evading everything. I think out of I don't know how many shots he had on at that, but if there was ten shots. I think he only landed like one or two. I mean, yeah. he just he was blocking it or dodging it almost every single shot, uh, and and he might have landed a couple in that entire exchange. But I mean, yeah, I mean, MVP just did it did an amazing job. 
uh, of when he was on the ground, get back up. And then, like I said, the guillotine, the way that he flipped out of that, I don't know how you did it, dude, because he had that thing sunk in there and you were not prepared for it. And you just squirm around and flip out of it, stand up. And and that's that's where he's going to win. If he would have gotten to the UFC five, six years ago, he would have been an absolute problem. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's that's the other thing, too. This was the main card that you got added on to. The main card yeah. as your debut in the UFC. Yeah. That that shows how much Dana has some appreciation for you. Uh, I mean, I, I know he was, I forget the name of the league that he was in. It's a pretty high ranked league from where he's from. He was in, he was in Bellator, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Bellator. That's right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, just you, you've got a lot of recognition. You've, you, you're pretty famous already just from all the clips that people see of you. Uh, like I mentioned too, the one of him spinning around, knocking the dude out and just looking out of the crowd before he even fell. That just, that amazes me every time they would show it just like, Oh my gosh, I love that. Uh, and, and I loved I mean, I, I, and I'm I'm probably I'm probably contradicting statements that I will say about other people in the future or something that I've said in the past. The way he did it, I loved the show building. I did. I, I thought it was yeah. so funny, uh, and it was really entertaining. And I think just the fact that Kevin Holland is he's a dude. I mean, he's very good, and and he's the one putting on a show most of the time. You got in his head. You you pissed him off. He could not figure out a way to land something on you. And and that was just so funny. The only thing he had was the leg kicks. And honestly, I think he should have kept on going there to wear him down because, you know, Absolutely. stop his mobility. Um, but overall, yeah, I mean, Michael Page, you could probably work on some ground game, do something on the ground. But outside of that, hats off to you because you just went against a very tough opponent who deserved to be on a main card as your, as your debut. So I mean I, I think he's I think he's got a future uh, and I don't know how old he is but I think he's got a future here in the next few years. I uh, I think he's like maybe like low to mid thirties I think. Yeah I mean so I, I was I was guessing years. probably low thirties yeah he's got a few years yeah. if he's if he's in it for the, for the next five years I think he'll he'll at least make a big splash uh, before yeah. he goes out but I, I mean I, I think he I think he learned a lot. That he could add to it. And now that he's got some some money from that event, uh, maybe use that to get some trainers that'll help you with other other things than just being able to showboat and dance around and you know do your <laughs> spinning kicks and everything. But he did prove that his style can compete in the UFC. What can he do with it after that? Uh, that's that's going to be the big one. But the fight right after that, I would say, man, I would say this was the fight of the night. If I had to pick one. This one was the fight of the, the fight of the night. Uh, Dustin Poirier against ben, Benoit Saint Denis, an absolutely amazing fight. Dustin Poirier got the guillotine in six times. I don't know how many times, just several times. <laughs> yeah. His coach told him, "Don't go for the guillotine." First ten seconds, he's already trying to get a guillotine yeah. in. You know, just Dustin Poirier knows his fighting style. He doesn't need his coach to tell him what to do. But he does need his coach to help him like, hey, this isn't working. Maybe we can try this and tr help strategize and, and kind of game plan in the moment. Maybe adjust. He doesn't necessarily need him to tell him how to fight. He's just there for guidance. And, and his coach knows that. But his coach is still going to tell him like, no, this is not working. It was really stupid because most of the time he got himself into a worse position because Benoit yep. Saint, Saint Denis would get out of it and start pounding on him on the ground yep. or he would get him down there. Uh, the f end of the first round. Yeah. Cause it only went to the second round, the end of the first round, he got saved by the bell. Vinoy St. Denis had the arm yep. bar in. I, I could be wrong, but it looked like he had it sunk in there and he was about to start bending it backwards and break his arm. And the bell rang. He got very lucky in those last few seconds that he didn't sink that in just a few moments sooner. Because that was very dangerous, almost sure. almost cost him a fight again from the, from a guillotine getting him on the ground, and he really wasn't going to win on the ground. You know, uh, you know, Saint Denis is is so good on the ground, and I, I mean, it just that's that was a dangerous thing for him to do. As as coach says, no more no more guillotines. He sinks another one, gets it close. I do think that last one that he sunk in there in, in round two, I think that was finally enough because when when you've got that sunk in there. He can't breathe. And so I think that was enough to wear St. Denis out. 
and he ended up getting him and, and clocking him with that right hand. Uh, very similar to it's to the McGregor fight. And I actually saw a screenshot. So when he connects against McGregor with that right hand and basically knocks him out, it was at the, uh, you know, and he ends up, I think he ended that fight at 232 in the second round. Uh, Benoit St. Denis connected with the right, ended that that one in, in, uh, with 232 in the second round. Exactly. Wow. Same. That is just, that's crazy. So, that's I mean, just, he knows how to fight. He is a warrior. Uh, a lot of respect to him. I was rooting against him. I really was. Uh, at, at, you know, at, at, when the fight came up, I was like, you know, I just want to see, you know, St. Denis is a new guy, new face. I want to, I want to cheer for him. But uh, yeah, I mean, comeback, comeback of the night for sure. If not the fight of the night to me. Yeah, it was a good one. Uh, Dustin, he was getting beat up a little bit there for he a minute. Was. Uh, I don't so, know how he wasn't but, cut up. That's that kind of surprised me because he had some big hits. He was taking some big ones. Yeah, and uh, look, the guillotine. He kept going for it and going for it, and then, yeah, you're right. It put him in bad positions. But I did love it when his coach said, "Hey, look, stop, stop it," and then and then he he rocks him. And then the first thing he goes to is the guillotine. And I'm like, I'm standing at my TV and I'm like, Dustin, stop. What are stop. you doing? Like, you're not sinking it. We were in, laughing brother, because we're like, your coach says don't. And you're like, screw that. <laughs> yes. Like, you're not locking that in. You're not winning this fight by submission, bro. Like, knock him out. And uh, and finally, he gave up on the guillotine. It took forever and a day. He only gave but, up uh, because it got him on the ground in a bad position. He was able to stand up and then find the right hand. <laughs> That's exactly. the only reason. Because I think if, if St. Denis would have came at him again, he was going to try to sink it in. And one thing I will say, St. Denis did not try to defend that at all. N he never put his chin down. Whenever he got that, like, whenever he started reaching around, he just opened it up and let him have it, uh, which was bad but on his part uh and like i said i don't think the guillotine with hindsight the guillotine wasn't a bad idea because i do think that's what that's what wore uh saint denis out the most yeah. um, because without those guillotines i don't think he would have wore them out uh, but then i guess at the same time they wouldn't have been on the ground so i don't know how that would have ro rolled out but with hindsight right now the way i look at it i think it did wear him out enough to to kind of empty out the gas tank and end up getting him in a in a rough rough position. Did you see what uh, Conor McGregor tweeted? Yeah, yeah, great About fight the between French the two Frenchies. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so, DP yeah, he, responded. He, he got, got that, that right hook too. too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I loved that. it. I loved it uh, because you know good. I don't like Dustin Poirier when he's being cocky. He just he he just the way that he comes across is wrong. I I don't know how to how to say it. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how to express it, but the way he's he comes Louisiana. across, to me, what's that? He's from Louisiana. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's that Louisiana yeah. hood talk or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, but you know, it's just the way the his cockiness just rubs me off wrong sometimes. But that one I loved uh, just because yeah. he's coming back at McGregor, who is the master of trash talk, and you you've got to come back back with something like, oh really? Well, how how that right right hook feel? Uh, so, because yeah, no. Connor did did feel that one, he did definitely feel that that right hook. What was <laughs> yeah. that? The second time they went against each other, right? Yeah. And then, because then uh, the third time was the doctor's decision. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just I, I thought that was the fight of the night to me, uh, for sure. The comeback of the night, the way that he was able to come back, because I think Saint Denis had him. He really did, and yeah. I, I think he was getting worn out because Dustin was just eating everything, every every big blow that he would take. He would shake it off and go back, and and so I just yeah that that was amazing to me, um, but a dude that ate more than just about anyone, uh, he might not have to eat anything for the rest. <laughs> he might not be able to eat anything for the, for the rest of of the month. Uh, was Cheeto Vera against Sean O'Malley? Uh, let me pull this yeah. up. I want to make sure I pull this stat up to make sure I don't get it wrong. So, the total significant strikes were two hundred and thirty. For Sugar Sean, he, he he delivered 230. I wish I had a picture of this to push post up on here for you to show you. So Chio Vera, uh, like on the you know like how they have like their body and shows the more more yeah. significant strikes. So he's kind of yellow in the legs, uh, pretty red in the and the knees, and then it kind of goes yellow again from his waist up to his head is just all red. 
<laughs> it's just yeah. the dude took a beating 150 significant shots to the head. I mean, if, if you didn't see it, I, I'll, I'll post a picture. I'll, I'll edit this in right here to post a picture to show you Cheeto Vera before the fight and after the fight just to see mm -hmm. how this looked. And so uh, I'm looking at this right now, 89 significant strikes for Cheeto Vera. I don't buy that. I mean, I don't know what you're calling yeah. a significant strike. He had some good shots. They weren't tough shots. They weren't like hurting Sean. The, I think the only really good shot that Cheeto Vera had the entire night was like with a couple of seconds left. He got him really good in the gut because even Sean yep. said something about, ooh, that one hurt. <laughs> you know, like, but so what I want to give flowers to Cheeto Vera for because he didn't do anything good in this fight other than somehow the dude did not give up. Most heart I have ever seen. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this dude took a beating like no other. I, I don't know how he survived this fight without going down. There was one time where he hit his knee and bounced right back up. But to this point in his career, his 10-year career in the UFC, he has never been knocked down or knocked out. So flowers to you for that. But go take some rest. Go heal up, man. <laughs> this dude got beat up. How did he survive that knee? That's what I want to know. It, oh, man, it I sounded don't know. that I thought that he was would out. Be atrocious. I, I thought he was out. Uh, Joe Rogan said that sounded like a bat hitting a watermelon. <laughs> so, oh my gosh! Well, and, and what I was saying earlier too. So Sean came out, and it just it started off boring because Sean came out like he should because he's the he's the he's the the belt holder. He has to defend mm. the belt. So he came out kind of defensive, staying back, not letting Cheeto hit him, and just feeling him out. And then I think he just realized, like, I've got some openings. I'm going to take them. A couple of good leg kicks. Got a, got a few good jabs in there, really good jabs. Like, even his just – his his normal jab. I'm not even talking about a haymaker. His normal jab feels like it would hurt more than my haymaker. <laughs> I, I mean that it, they were they were all so loud. Um, I mean it just so many. Uh, I mean he he was he was on fire all night, but it felt like first round he felt him out, and then you know whenever he f started getting some strikes in, it felt like Sean won ever since then because he found the confidence. Second round, third round, fourth round, fifth round, he was gassed by the fifth round because he's throwing so much. But uh, I, I think I think him going in there and finally tagging him a few times in the first round gave him the confidence to come out in the second, third, and fourth, and fifth uh, and just lay a beating on him. I don't think Cheeto could see him at the end. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for Sean Saturday night was his ability to switch stances uh, and go southpaw back oh, yeah. to orthodox southpaw. And I thought he really, really did that. Uh, to perfection and him working the body of Cheeto. I don't, I don't think Cheeto really expected Sean to go to the body the way he did. And uh, Cheeto couldn't, I mean, he couldn't stop it. And I, Sean I agree just, with you. I, I don't think Cheeto was ready for it, but that was the right move. And, and honestly, that's why I thought he would have knocked him out because he, he bruised him. Like I said, the, the body chart here, he, he, nailed yeah. him from the waist up you know like that entire torso had to be killing uh and then your your face <laughs> from from the well, knee and all those fists coming in so many so like tough. hard jabs and haymakers dude and he was going right through the guard and i thought sean was gonna have to knock him out you know i said on the preview yeah. that well, sean's gotta end it because if it gets to four and five cheeto is gonna he's gonna come at you with everything he got and cheeto tried but then sean bop I mean, it was like, hey, back up off me, you know? Yeah, it was every time that Cheetah would get one in, Sean would have a counter to back him up again. Yeah. And 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 I think by the, you know, like the third, end of the third round when Cheeto really started trying to come in a little more was whenever Sean would get him just well enough where it was like, oh, and I can't see anything now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing black. I'm seeing stars. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was – and Sean is really, really good. So that, that front sidekick – that he uses all the time. He's really good at using that to back you up, create some some distance, and he's just so fast of of bouncing in there and just striking before you even know it. Not only that, the, but the precision that he had. I know. I think it was at the 
end of the first round, he hit something like 76% of his shots or 78% yeah. of his shots. When they yeah. showed that number, that was insane. For those of you who don't know the percentages, if you're above like 45%, I mean, that's for like for <laughs> your total significant strikes. That's pretty good. You know, like yeah. against a fighter like Cheeto, um, you know, if you're above 50%, you're, you're looking pretty solid. 70 some percent is just unheard of. No doubt. Cheeto's got that dog though, man. Like, for sure. He just kept coming and for him to stay alive uh, in <laughs> that ring. Yes, yeah, literally, bro. <laughs> like after that knee, and Sean said he heard something break in there. But I mean, goodness, I said as soon as he it it sounded off, I said he is dead. All right, yeah, I, I thought for sure he was dropping. <laughs> and dude just backed up to the cage. Said, "All right, I'm good. Uh, let me shake these cobwebs off. Let me dance around for a second. <laughs> I'm back, bro. Like uh, back, like I never left. So." That Cheeto, I got to give him his flowers. He's yeah. a dog. Uh, but I think it was a pure master class from Sean. Uh, just his ability to just keep pushing Cheeto and and always uh, – he just always controlling the octagon. And I felt like he did that Saturday night. And, you know, he they say you're not a champ until you defend the, until you defend the belt, and he did it. So uh, he's champ. I didn't like him in – Post fight and calling out and all that, like, um, I think he, kinda, yeah, I, I think he, I think he went to say it and then was like, eh, let me, let me back up a little bit, and then he was just like, the hell with it, let's roll with it, you know. Um, I, because, I like it because he's calling out a dude ahead of him, but he also gave him his flowers by saying, because he's like, why do you want, why do you want Ilya? Oh, because that dude's a, he's scary. He's a monster. You know, like, I liked the way he did it personally. I don't know if he wants that battle right now. I, I don't think he does. Yeah. And I, I think that's why he wants it because he's like, that dude makes me question if I should do it. So I think I, I want to go for it. If he's fighting him at a, at a weight class above in, in Elia's weight class, I'm all for it. For Sean. Yeah. But, man, I, I'm putting my money on Elia right now. Yeah, that's a different type I, of animal I'll, up there. It is. You're going up a weight class. I like that better for Sean because you're not going to risk losing your belt. That's the only yeah. reason why I'm, I'm like, that's probably the better move of the two. But you're also fighting him in his home home country because he said, take me to Spain. You're yeah. going to fight Give him me in the Spain. Jet. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the jet, Dana. Give me the jet. No, nah, I mean, yeah, it just, it, I, I, I think, I think this was more, of Sean just wanting to come out there and cause as much pain mm -hmm. to Cheeto Vera as he possibly could. Uh, I think it was more of that than it was Cheeto Vera just not fighting good because I, I don't th I think Cheeto is being smart and trying to find his, his time. It's just Sean wasn't letting him and, and the precision, uh, something that, that Connor always says is precision beats power. Uh, timing beats speed. So I mean, just you know, like that—that's that's true. I mean, as 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 cool as that sounds, it, it's it's pretty accurate of a statement. Uh, that that precision was just hitting him right on the spot at the right time, uh, and it, it like you said, it was a master class for the champ. Uh, and and Sean knew he he mentioned a couple of times that like, you know, it's it, you're not you're not you're not even a champ until you have to defend it. I, I'm here to be a champ, and I'm here to I'm here to defend it and keep it for a while. Uh, and he he wants to he wants to run that weight class. And and so far he's doing it. So just an amazing fight. He's a superstar, Josh. He is. He is. And is so like I brought this up on on air, and I even was was going into it with my my dad because my dad was just rooting against him a little bit uh, at first, and then he was like, "Man, this guy's so good. I have a hard time rooting against him." That's exactly how I feel about him. I don't like Sean. Like as a person. I, I just I, I, there's so many things outside of the octagon I just don't like about him. I don't like his style. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing too. Like as at least like in the UFC, like what's up with the with the crazy curly you know afro with the with the 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 color all over in it and matching your shorts and then you even have yeah. the lights match your your hair and stuff like that. All of that just and then your colored Lamb Lamborghini. What are you doing? Um, but I can't I can't say that I don't like him as a UFC fighter. I absolutely love watching him fight, and I hate that I love him as a fighter. 
<laughs> but yeah, he is. He's, he's 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 a superstar, and I think he's gonna be there for a while. He's still pretty young. I think twenty seven. So yeah, he's still got some years in him. So yeah. if he keeps on fighting like that and hardly getting tagged, so that's that's one thing. Is he <laughs> said I'll be sur- in, in uh, some one of the press conferences. He says I'll be surprised if he lands a shot. He called mm. that because Shiro didn't really land a shot. <laughs> No, nah, Deshaun controlled it, and yeah. uh, like I said, pure master class. It was a hell of a fight. Uh, it was a fun one to watch. Really wanted, you know, Sean to win that fight just because I wanted him to defend it and take over that class. And I know, I know, Dana was just absolutely bricked up because he's like, "Hey, I got, I got a superstar. All right, yeah. like well, I got a guy that I can ride now." Yeah, and, and that's that's what that's what you're always searching for is somebody like yes. him because he he brings the Conor McGregor attention almost, you know, yeah. like that that style of attention, not not the not the magnitude, but that style of attention. Mm-hmm. He, he brings that, and so I mean that's that's absolutely what you want, uh, and no so doubt. you know, so I, I I absolutely love it. Congrats to Sean, uh, Sugar Sean. It is welcome to the Sugar Show. It is absolutely so fun to watch him fight. So if you didn't see UFC 299, I totally recommend recommend going back and at least watching that fight. Uh, and I would even throw in that Dustin Poirier fight too because a couple of really good fights. If you have time and you're you're a big fight fan, watch that whole card. That whole card was so much fun. You can skip through the parts that you're not feeling. Uh, that, that's that's the nice thing about going back and watching it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I, I'm ready for 300 now. I'm I'm ready for 300. I'm excited for it. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope it lives up to the hype. I, I really hope it does. Um, but it's got some big shoes to fill, like I said. Uh, it's, it's got some big shoes to fill because that was a very fun fight night. Uh, very excited. But that's all we got for you guys. We thank you all so much for tuning in with us. If you're watching on, on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Keep on supporting us over there. Uh, and hit that like button as well. We need, a, we need to see those likes. We want to see that you like it. Uh, and then comment down below. Uh, comment what your what your favorite fight was of UFC 299 uh, or whatever you want to comment. Just throw it down there. But we thank you all so much for for all of the love we've seen over on YouTube. Uh, and if you're if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, go ahead and give us a five star review. It's the best way to help us over on those platforms. And you can also follow us on social media. We're on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that fun stuff. So go show us some love over there. Uh, we thank you all so much. We'll catch you on the next one.